Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Azoic Explains. My name is Sarah and I'm a marketing associate here at Azoic. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about the difference between CDNs and caching and why caching is so much better for site speed than a plugin. So firstly is CDNs. CDNs are geographically distributed networks of proxy servers serving content to users more quickly. If all server requests are sent to the same place, it takes a lot of time and effort for that request to be sent back to the user because there are potentially thousands of users at once from all over the world. CDNs act as a layer between the user and the server to avoid sending all of these requests to the same server. Popular CDN services are Cloudflare, Akami, Max CDN, which is now Stackpath. Basically, the proxy servers that are typically all around the globe keep a version of your website served on it instead of coming all the way back to the original server to get that information. So, for example, if the origin server is in Toronto, the server will send all of that information about the website to the CDNs all around the world. Seattle, Mexico, Brazil, Zimbabwe, Russia, South Korea, Indonesia, and the CDN's proxy server will hold that information. Now, when a user is in Poland and sends a request to a website, the information will be pulled from the proxy server in Russia rather than the request being sent all the way to Canada and back. Caching is a process of sorting that information on these proxy servers for a set period of time before the proxy server then goes back to the original server to get the most updated versions of the website. The main difference between CDNs and caching is like saying a rectangle is a square, but a square is not a rectangle. CDNs perform caching, but not everything that performs caching is a CDN. There are multiple types of caching, and I'm going to walk you through some of them. So, as I said, Caching is a process of storing a version of a website for a set period of time. This greatly increases the website speed and is one of the most impactful things publishers can do to improve their site speed, as it greatly reduces time a visitor has to wait on a website to load. Google often tells us how to improve site speed, which we have done multiple videos and blogs on, whether that be plugins, widgets, and services to increase site speed. But these often can also make your site speed worse because there is more attached to your website that has to load and function. Now, let's go into different types of caching. First, we're going to look at page caching. This also is sometimes called HTTP or site caching. This type of caching stores things like images, web pages, and other content temporarily when it's loaded for the first time and is stored in an unused section of RAM and doesn't have a significant impact on memory. This way, when a visitor returns back to the site, the content loads very quickly because it's already been memorized. This type of caching is limited, however. Publishers can set how long the data is stored before it is refreshed with the newest version of it from the original server. But it also means that even if there are pages with nothing to update, they will still be updated and cached for later. This is common with WordPress plugins, where if you don't have the rules set correctly, you're actually making your site slower or your visitors are seeing not the most updated version of your site. I'll get more into setting caching rules later. The next type of caching is called browser caching. This is especially great for sites we visit frequently because it's much faster. Instead of sending out the request and pulling back the data to you to display the website, the data is stored in your computer. Browser caching is also a type of page caching. Browser caching allows visitors who have been on the site before to be cookied. A rule is set then is that if the content hasn't changed since the last time the user visited, they will be served the same version of the site they saw before that site is cached, making the web page load instantly. You've probably experienced this if you're a regular visitor to sites like Facebook or Gmail. These pages should load very quickly because a lot of the information is already stored on your computer. Many browsers like Chrome and Firefox use browser caching. When the pages are updated, the website communicates to the browser and the old content is replaced with the new content and saved. Browser caches store groups of files and content for later use, like HTML and CSS pages, JavaScript, images, or multimedia. Users can change these settings in their browser though, so that data isn't stored in their computer. Caching rules allow publishers to set parameters for how often elements of your site are cached. Tactics such as serving static assets, with an efficient cache policy as suggested by Google Lighthouse can help improve a site's website speed. There are also ways to do this through HTML by hand coding the max age directive to tell the browser how long it should cache. 
This is measured in seconds. Other ways you can set rules is to use the cache control, no cache code. If important information on your site is updated, but you still want some of the benefits of caching. This will signal the server to double check if the item needs to be replaced with newer material or to serve the cache version it had already saved. Things like a forum would require more frequent caching while the layout of a forum doesn't need to be updated more than one or two times a year. So now that we understand caching and CDNs, let me get into something called caching on the edge with Cloudflare. Cloudflare actually has an additional layer of caching than is standard, which makes this process even faster. Cloudflare has dedicated data centers that it rents from ISPs, which are internet server providers, so that they have more locations all over the globe, more than a typical CDN has. Say that there's a user in India, and the nearest CDN server proxy is in Indonesia. What Cloudflare does differently is it rents ISPs, internet server providers, all over the world to store caches from the nearest server proxy. Now, instead of being sent to Indonesia, the request is sent to a much closer ISP, like in New Delhi. So that's it for this episode of Azoic Explains. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you truly understand now the difference between CDNs and caching, and why caching is so much better for site speed than using a plugin. If you like this video, you can subscribe to our channel um, to see other Azoic Explains videos. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.